Hello my nerd musician friend, in this video I'm going to show you my complete process of how I build my MIDI controllers. This is actually a summary of a live I did in November, which I talked for about 3 hours, but in this video I'm going to put only the most important parts. I'm going to talk about MIDI controllers, what they are and how you can build them, what's the best brain for a MIDI controller. And I mean, what is the best Arduino for your MIDI controller? What Arduinos are? How can you use them? I'm going to talk about components. How can you use buttons, potentiometers, a breadboard? How can you wire your circuit? And how can you program your board without actually having to learn how to code? I'm going to show you how to use the code I only show inside my paid courses. Where you can use buttons, potentiometers, rotary encoders, displays, LEDs, motorized faders and more. And also I'm going to answer a lot of the questions of the people that watched the live. So watch it until the end because it will clarify a lot if you're thinking about building your own MIDI controllers. So let's get started. So first we're gonna talk about MIDI controllers and or how to build MIDI controllers. So first thing is like, what is a MIDI controller? That may be, that might be obvious for you, for some of you, what a MIDI controller is, but for some people it's not, okay? So a MIDI controller is an interface uh, that, it's an interface that uses the MIDI protocol. So imagine that you have, it can be a launch pad like that. It can be a mixer. It can be a keyboard, okay? And this interface, this equipment, wants to send a type of information. Let's say you have a keyboard and you want to send the note C sharp 3 at half of intensity, like medium intensity, okay? And then you want to send uh, an F sharp. And now you want to, like in your DAW, you want to trigger a sample and you want to send a MIDI control change or control a volume with MIDI control change with a different type of MIDI message. So what is this? MIDI is just information. It tells what, when and how. It tells, for example, the note, which note and when and with which, uh, with which intensity, okay? Or uh, the volume parameter, okay? Uh, or the, the, the pan, like the position of the pan. So you can control uh, things like you can send notes or you can actually control things like the volume, uh, the parameters are inside your plugin. So that's MIDI. MIDI is just information. And MIDI actually stands for uh, Musical Instrument Digital Interface and it's just a language, it's just a protocol. There's no sound with MIDI. MIDI has no sound, okay? And some interfaces that can use the MIDI protocol are called MIDI controllers. Okay, so you use a MIDI controller to control another thing, to control a synthesizer, for example, to control a digital audio workstation, for example, or MIDI nowadays is used for so much, you can use for controlling a DJ software, a VJ software, even uh, photo editing software and video editing software like Adobe Premiere, um, or Adobe Lightroom or Photoshop. So you can use MIDI controllers for uh, to a lot of things, okay? But what if you want to control a cutoff, a filter of a synthesizer with the movement of your hand in the air? Uh, what if you want to use MIDI of your DAW to control a set of lights in your stage? What if you want um, to control a motor? What if you want to create an art installation? What if you want to use a, the, the, the temperature of the air to make music? What if you want to get crazy? You won't find this in a store for sure. You won't find that on Guitar Center. How to convert uh, the wind, the speed of the wind into notes. So for that you need to build yours. Um, so there's a couple reasons I believe and a couple reasons I am in love with of why you should build MIDI controllers. And one is things like that, for example, this costs, this cost me around $40, or in Brazil here like 150 reais, or even like 120 reais. And if you bought this like a MIDI fighter, a MIDI fighter would cost you like $200, 250. So building a MIDI controller is so cheap, is super cheap. So that's the first reason, okay? 
it can be like five, 10 times cheaper than if you bought one in a store. Another reason, if you, if you like a, a certain plugin, if you like Massive, uh, Massive from Native Instruments, the, the synth, which I love, or if you like a specific compressor that you use a lot, if you have a like, um, generic MIDI controller, you're, it doesn't look like the, the, the plugin you use. It's, it's not the same. So one thing you can do is creating your own MIDI controller that looks like the plugin that you have. So you can create customized uh, interfaces that looks like exactly the plugins that you have. Okay, so that's the second reason. And the third one is like the first thing I was talking, if you want to get crazy, you can just get crazy and create anything you want uh, with a MIDI controller, with uh, an Arduino that I'm going to talk about more. So uh, one thing that I want to show you here is uh, a couple of the MIDI controllers I have built. So I am going to um, move here to my screen and I'm going to show you some of the MIDI controllers I have built uh, with the platform I'm going to show you, which is the Arduino. And press here to come back to scale. It's everything mapped automatically for you because of the MIDI script. Now you can control volumes, sends, but it could be anything. First thing I have done was a launch pad inspired on the MIDI fighter. Uh, so let me just talk a little bit about me. Maybe you don't know me, maybe you do. My name is Gustavo Silveira and I am Brazilian. And I think we have some Brazilians here. And I started because two reasons. Things are super expensive in Brazil. MIDI controllers are ridicu ridiculously expensive. And at the time that I was, um, I graduated in music, by the way, music composition. That's what I studied and I have been a musician my whole life. So no background in engineering. I'm not an engineer. I'm not a software engineer, uh, electrical engineer, whatever. I am a musician. Uh, and all that I learned about um, electronics and programming was self-thought. And um, the reason I started researching that it was because I had an electronic music project and uh, I, I, I wanted to smash buttons and perform and um, I didn't have money to buy a MIDI fighter or even like a push controller for Ableton. So I was like, ah, oh, what if I, if, I if I build my MIDI controller? But there was no single place with all the information I needed to build a MIDI controller. So I digged like a duck from all, all around the, the, the internet for months and uh, like was a lot of trial and error. Way more error than uh, anything else. Was it was painful, but I was able to make my first MIDI controller and was super nice. Then I did another one. And um, after I started making some, some people started to ask me, oh, can you do one for me? I was like, ah, yeah, if you pay me, yeah. And I did one, two, three, and I started to do to a couple people. And I thought, well, there's more people uh, wanting, probably there's more people wanting to build MIDI controllers. So I was, maybe I should just create a blog and teach people how to do it so people can have all the information they need to build MIDI controllers in one single place. And that's how the nerd musician was born. After that, I went to the United States to do a master's in music technology um, at Georgia Southern University. 
After that, I worked at Ball State University as human computer interaction into electronics designer. And I decided to leave the United States and come back home to try to live from um, YouTube and courses and this that we are doing today, which I love. Okay, so that's why I'm here today. And uh, I hope you enjoy you enjoy it you, you enjoy it too god damn it so okay guys so let's start with what we want we are going to talk about how to build MIDI controllers so the first thing we need to do is understanding uh, the center the core of this MIDI controller the brain of this MIDI controller so every electronics that does something uh, like a like a drone does something complex uh, like a robot has a brain so beso besides your brain you're gonna need Another one. And for this project, or for MIDI controllers, we can use, it's not the only option, but it's probably the best option for beginners, which is an Arduino. So what an Arduino is, okay, so focus. An Arduino is a credit-sized board that has a microcontroller. So this thing here is a microcontroller. And the microcontroller will be the brain of your Arduino, of your MIDI controller. But what an Arduino? Why an Arduino? We use an Arduino because the Arduino can get information from the physical world, like the touch of a button, the turn of a knob. So let me get something here, like you can get a potentiometer, you can turn the knob, okay? You can get a distance sensor or a light sensor, whatever sensor, anything that gathers information that from the physical world, real physical world, the Arduino can get that and transform into digital data. So the Arduino transforms the information from the physical world to the digital world. And for example, you can get this information, let's say the press of a button, and in the Arduino through some programming, and don't get scared with that, it's going to be the easiest way for you. With some programming, you can tell, oh, when you press this button, turn on an LED. For example, change the brightness of this LED when you turn the knob or send a MIDI note. So we can actually create MIDI controllers with the Arduino. So you can see here that this Arduino, this is the Arduino Uno and we actually have different Arduinos. Uh, let me find another Arduino here. I just had one laying around but... Okay, it's gone, but it's here. So this is another Arduino. So look at the difference. Can do mostly the same things, but they have some differences. What are the differences between Arduino? So for example, I'm going to show you here. Um, here, so this is the Arduino Uno. This is the most common Arduino, the most famous Arduino, which is the one that I have here. It has a USB-B, it has a place for, the, um, for a power supply, and it has pins that you can connect jumpers which is this thing here is a wire that you can just plug in those holes here and it's good the arduino uno is good because um it's really easy to prototype uh, to test things because you don't need to solder you can just put this jumper in one hole and then put in another one and test your circuits using a breadboard which i'm going to talk about so okay so we have the arduino uno but we also have, for example, the Arduino Mega, which has way more pins in case you need more pins for your project. But it's kind of big. And we have the Arduino Nano, which is way smaller. Arduino Pro Mini, which is even smaller, but without a um, USB. We have Arduino Micro. We have Arduino Pro Micro. And the Pro Micro is the one here. It is my favorite one. And we are going to talk about why. Um, we have the Arduino Pro Micro, we have even like an Arduino like that, which is the lily pad, which is good for wearables. If you want to put in your clothes and put um, conductive material, how do you say, um, conductive thread, you can thread in your shirt and actually make a, an electronic thing inside a wearable, in a shirt, in a pillow. So this is great for that. We have the Tinsy, which is a type of an Arduino is not made from the company Arduino, but you can program like an Arduino, okay? So we have those, we have many different types of, uh, of Arduinos and some are better for one, for something and some are better for other things. So which ones? Oh, so just one thing, like an Arduino also is the name of the company, okay? And you can find like Arduino, 
or Genuino. Our Genuino is sold in the United States and uh, Arduino is sold in the rest of the world. And the Arduino is open source, which means that anybody can get the files of the Arduino and reproduce legally and sell it. I believe you have to change the name, but you can make a board that it's exactly the same and sell it or change and make your own. So that's why a lot of Chinese, Chinese companies make Arduinos that are so cheap. You can get an Arduino Pro Micro like that, I guess for $2.50. I don't know how much now, but they are so cheap and it's legal. And it's this, people ask me, oh, uh, is it the same quality of the Arduino, the original one? Yes, it's the same quality, um, but probably is the same quality. This doesn't even matter, but why should you buy then the, the original Arduino? To support the project. So you should buy at least one Arduino, original Arduino, so you can support the project because everything is open source. Uh, you can use their ID with other boards for free. So just buy one original, okay? But then for your projects later, you can get from AliExpress, super cheap. Okay guys, so um, one thing. Which, my, which Arduino should you buy for a MIDI controller, you might ask. And that's, um, that's a question that I get a lot. Because we, we get overwhelmed, uh, right? Because look, we have many, and this is just the tip of the iceberg, we have many types of MIDI controllers. So which one should you get? So my advice is, you should get at least one Arduino Uno. Why? Because it's good for prototyping. You just plug the, the jumpers here, you don't need to solder, nothing. And you can test your prototypes. You can even use the Arduino Uno in the MIDI controller. However, there are some problems. When you, uh, a MIDI controller, you want that when you plug it, it's recognized out of the box, like a MIDI controller. You plug and in your DAW it says, oh, MIDI controller, badass MIDI controller is on and you can just use it. However, when you plug an Arduino in the computer, it doesn't see a MIDI controller, it sees an Arduino. And with the Arduino Uno, there's a way you can convert it to MIDI class compliant, which is uh, what we call when plug and play. You can convert the Arduino Uno to MIDI class compliant, and that's not all of the Arduinos. Not going to get into much detail because I have a complete video of which Arduino to choose, uh, and just look here in my YouTube and I explain why. But some Arduinos can become MIDI controllers out of the box. You don't need to do any extra hack. This one needs an extra hack, okay? And the Arduino that doesn't need, or some of the Arduinos that doesn't need the, this extra hack, one of them is the Arduino Micro. And the other one is the Arduino Pro Micro. And another one is the Arduino Leonardo. They are my favorite because you can just plug and play and make it into a MIDI controller, okay? And they are tiny and they are cheap. So I usually try to get the cheapest Arduino that works in my project. So now that you know, my advice is the Arduino Pro Micro is my favorite. Uh, Micro is good too, it has more pins. And the Tinsy is actually the best because it's tiny, it's plug and play and has a lot of pins because there's the pin limitation of how many buttons, how many potentiometers you can plug. So the Tinsys is actually the best of them. And there's different Tinsys, there are bigger Tinsys. This is the Tinsy LC, which is great, great. But the Tinsy LC, the Tinsy family is more expensive. Uh, if you live in the States or in, in Europe, they're not expensive. But if you live in Brazil, in Brazil like me, they can get really expensive. So uh, I prefer buying from AliExpress the Arduino Pro Micro. Okay, and with the Arduino Pro Micro, it has a pin limitation of the number of inputs you can connect. I will teach you how. Uh, I don't know if I'll, we're gonna have time, but there's possible to use something like called a multiplexer, an extra component that you can increase the number of inputs of an Arduino Pro Micro up to 100 and something, 116, I guess. I don't know, it's a lot or even more. So if more than 100 components in your MIDI controller is not enough for you, okay. That's a nice project. So Arduino Pro Micro is my favorite. Tinsy LC, probably the best or a bigger one. And Arduino Uno is great for prototyping. And there's a video on my YouTube about that. So now how do we do that? Okay, so now 
that now we start to get our brains melted a little bit if it's not yet uh let me just get some water do you have doubts let me let me see if you put anything here yeah milo said that adafruit makes wearable boards yeah besides the besides the the lily pad adafruit has really nice uh, they have their own boards adafruit actually actually have their arduino compatible because it's open source adafruit which is a company got the arduino project and made different boards based in the arduino that you can program like an Arduino. So for example, there's the Feather board, which has Bluetooth low energy built-in. So you can get a MIDI controller with a Bluetooth in just one board. So really nice, huh? Okay, guys, so I want to um, talk a little bit about electronics now, okay? Uh, oh, good question. No need for power supply with Nano. Let me get here to the Nano. Good question. Uh, actually, the Nano is this one, but maybe you were talking about the Pro Mini. So how the Arduino is powered, like power? From the USB, or if you're not using the USB, you can use this thing here. But if you're not using the USB and you don't have this, or you don't even have the USB like this, how, you, how can you do it? Every Arduino will have pins here that you can actually connect power through wires. So it's not that easy, okay? So you're gonna have to have your own uh, power pin so you can connect your power supply or your battery. So for example here, VCC is five volts, where you're going to connect five volts, and then here is ground. So you're gonna have to connect uh, five volts here, or raw, you can connect more than five volts, because the Arduinos are five volts. So if you connect more than five volts, uh, you might fry your Arduino, so you get uh, the raw pin there, move me here. So the raw pin here, you can connect uh, a power supply here that goes up to, I don't know, depends on the Arduino, 12 volts, 18 volts. Okay, so uh, let me see if I have more questions. What are your thoughts on the Arduino Do for MIDI? I never used the Arduino Do, but I think it has, uh, you can use the MIDI, MIDI uh, I'm pretty sure you can use the MIDI USB library, which we're gonna talk about, and you can use it for MIDI. I think the Do is more powerful. The thing is, I, I I try to get cheap, you know, I try, I try to use the most simple, cheaper Arduino for MIDI. I don't, there's no reason why use better Arduinos like the Do, unless you have it, or unless your project uh, has so many uh, components that it gets slow, um, or you want to do lights at the same time, then you can get fancy, uh, but the TNC, if you can want to get fancy, the TNC is my favorite. Um, used to be part of a Pro Micro, almost always breaks after... T ah, that's a great question. So, he's talking about... This is the Arduino Pro Micro, and after you program it a couple of times, it just dies. Bricks. It's called brick. Like, it's bricked, and you cannot use it anymore. And it happened today with me, because I formatted my computer, and all the software is new, and, like, that was a big mistake. Um, so, the, my Arduino... Pro micro bricked, but there's a way you can burn a new bootloader. Uh, you can't, you, you, a bootloader is the firmware, only complicated words. It's the software that comes in the, in the Arduino. You can change its software to a better one. Um, and I use the SparkFun bootloader for the Arduino Pro Micro. And you need an Arduino Uno to burn the bootloader in the Arduino uh, Pro Micro. I have this, uh, I showed this in my course how to do it. But how to burn a new bootloader, Arduino Pro Micro, if you Google, uh, I, if, I, if I remember, I'm going to put the link in the description, okay? But it's doable and probably won't happen anymore or not as often. Arduino Do is 32-bit and it's 84 uh, hertz. Yeah, it will be faster, it will be faster. But doesn't mean that the Arduino Pro Micro is not fast enough. So um, I don't know if you can perceive the difference if you don't use like hundreds of buttons, but only with testing to know, but definitely an Arduino Duo is way faster. And if you're doing lots of things at the same time, then a faster Arduino is good. So Tata's music channel, I am in the process of making a MIDI harp with 36 strings. I am not sure whether I should have used a Duo, Duo or, or Mega. Um, I don't remember how many pins do have. As I told you, I would use an Arduino Pro Micro with multiplexers. Uh, I teach how to, 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 to do this in, inside the, the course, and I'm going to show you in the code what you can do. I don't know if I'm gonna have time to show you exactly how, but I'm going to share you with you the code that I only share inside my course with you guys, which is the extended code, where uh, you can use multiplexers really easily. 
Oh, he said that the USB port breaks physically from the weld. I'm sorry. I gave you a whole explanation and that was not the question. Oh yeah, um, micro USB, it's not ideal, but you can um, get another like a USB extension and use a USB extension with USB-B if that's the problem. Uh, you can even use, uh, get another USB with wires. So that, that's, there is a workaround, but the USB of the Arduino Pro Micro is not great. There are Arduino Pro Micros coming with a USB Mini now on AliExpress. Not the Micro, but the Mini. So take a look there. Um, okay, so let's go here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about electronics, okay? So two things we have to know. We have two different of inputs in the Arduino. Digital and analog, and that's important. Digital, try to think, of, think about a digit, just one digit. That's one or zero, one or zero, on or off, pressed or not pressed, pressed or not pressed, okay? So a digital input in the Arduino, you, you will connect components that's just on and off. Buttons and switches, but analog, in the analog inputs, you're gonna connect things that have a minimum and a maximum. It's just, it's not just on and off. Okay, so potentiometers, uh, any type of sensor, you know, that uh, have an information that's analog to the real world, something that's minimal, uh, like a distance, you know, uh, you have a minimum and a maximum and infinite numbers in between. Any type of sensor that works like that, you will connect in the analog uh, input. So let me just show you something here. So for example, the Arduino Uno. Those are the digital pins where you can connect buttons. So it's digital inputs, but also digital output. So you will connect buttons or LEDs, motors, but let's just talk about inputs. So here from zero to 13, you're going to connect and we will avoid zero and two because these two uh, pins here can be used to um, exchange serial information, whatever that means for now. So we're going to use from three to 13 in the Arduino Uno, for example. And in the Arduino Pro Micro, from two to nine, two to 15 here. If you take a look here, which is the Arduino, oops, Arduino Pro Micro pinout, you can see that what is, um, I think what is, you can use as a digital pin. So you can see that even the, the A3, A2 can be used as a digital pin. And the analog pins, which are green, are this ones, A0, A2, A3 from analog one, but you can also use this pin here as A10, this one here as A9, A8, A7, A6. So, some, so sometimes just looking at the Arduino itself, you don't know exactly which pins can be used for what. It's not that obvious. So you can Google Arduino Pro Micro pinout and you can see which ones are analog or which ones are digital. So how do we connect a button or how do we connect a... Um, a digital pin. So a button is really simple. So where's my button? One leg, you can see that you have two legs. So how a button works? When you press a button, it closes the circuit. The energy will flow through the button. When the button is not pressed, the energy is not flowing. But when you press, the energy is flowing, the electricity. And one pin, one terminal, you will connect in the Arduino digital pin and the other one you will connect in the ground. So for example here, this is ground, this is a digital. Okay, so one pin in the digital, one leg in the digital pin and the other one in the uh, ground. The Arduino will be reading in the digital pin, the current will flow through it. So when you press the button, the current will flow and the Arduino will read a voltage, a change in the voltage, okay? So when we get this thing change in the voltage, we're gonna talk we're gonna uh, tell the Arduino to send a MIDI note, for example. But the potentiometer, and guys, I have some free videos where I teach this um, maybe more in depth or uh, edited in a video here in the YouTube too. You can look for DIY MIDI controller workshop. But anyways, a potentiometer, and I'm going to change here to uh, my to my table. So, okay, so here my table. So here's a potentiometer and you can see that it has three legs. So I'm not going to get it much into detail, but this leg goes to ground. This leg goes to five volts in the Arduino and this leg goes to an analog 
pin of the Arduino. So ground, 5 volts, and analog pin of the Arduino. So how can I actually build a circuit with the Arduino without actually have... Uh, so let me just look in the chat here before uh, we get into the circuit here. So questions about components, about the, the electronics. I know that we talking a lot, but it is what it is. That's a lot, a lot to cover. Is rotary encoder better choice than potentiometers? That's a great question. Uh, I think I have a rotary encoder here. Yes, I have one here so I can show you. So here is a rotary encoder with click. So what is a rotary encoder? It has infinite, some people call it, um, well, how can I say, um, infinite potentiometer or something like that because a normal potentiometer has an end, beginning and end, and a rotary encoder, no. It just increments uh, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, just goes down or up. Rotary encoders are great because a potentiometer has a absolute position. So if it's in zero, it's in zero. And for example, if you want to map a potentiometer to two different parameters, parameter A and parameter B. And you can change the MIDI channel to do that. Use the same components to map two things. When you move the knob, let, let's say you mapped par parameter A and left in zero. Then you moved to the, to, to, you changed your MIDI channel and now you're, you, uh, you mapped parameter B and you moved to 10. You're okay, parameter one is in zero and two, uh, let's say A and B, uh, parameter A is in 0 and B is in 10. Now I want to move my parameter A again, but remember that it was in 0, but now my potentiometer position is in 10. So when I move this, it will send the value 10 or 9 to that parameter A, and it was here in 0, it will do like that. Bah! It will skip to the value 10. So that's a problem when using potentiometers, when you want to use the same component to map different things. With that being said, a rotary, a rotary encoder doesn't have this problem. It's just absolute. You can program this in a way that parameter A is in, is in 10. Okay, so it starts in 10. Oh, that, now I changed to, to bank A and it was in zero. Oh, I can start from zero. It is great, right? But great powers come with great responsibilities. And um, uh, the problem is that it is way harder to use. First, rotary encoders are not analog, they are digital, and they have two digital pins. They are hard to use. You take the Making Music with Arduino course where I teach exactly how to use rotary encoders, exactly the way I told you. So in my code, in, in the code that I'm going to show you today, it implements rotary encoders. But there's another problem. Rotary encoders take two digital pins and um, can't be multiplexed. You can't use a multiplexer, that thing that I told you that increases the number of inputs of an Arduino for X reasons. So you need, so each encoder needs two pins and uh, can't be multiplexed. So if you want to use eight encoders, you need 16 digital pins. Um, so, you need an Arduino with more pins. So for example, if you want to use eight rotary encoders, you can use the, the Tinsy LC. And there's another catch. Uh, it needs to be a special pin. Uh, it, it's not just digital pin, it's a special digital pin with interrupt. So there's, um, there's a lot of things about encoders which, which make them hard to use. They're great. Uh, but they have this problem. Also, some people like to know exactly where they are in their, um, in their knob. You know, I know I can see because uh, with the encoder, you can't see where you, are, where you are unless you have an LED ring like many controllers have. But also to create an LED ring is hard. So rotary, encode, rotary encoders are super hard, but totally doable. But inside the course, I also teach exactly how to do it. Um, and I am, I'm actually designing a controller with eight rotary encoders to use to control macro controllers inside Ableton. But anyways, let's see more questions. Uh, what do you think about interference? My pots never stay ready even if not touched. So I have to round up. Okay, so what about interference? Interference is a problem that can be overcome. Um, inside my code, you have a pretty stable reading in my potentiometers, but it is because I am using a filtering algorithm 
that comes the using a library which is the responsive potentiometer library and you, you're gonna see that even in my code when you in the debug mode when you're just looking at what's going on you can see that there's a responsive reading so that's that's a game changer so if you use the responsive um, responsive read or something like that uh, library it basically solves this problem it, it changes everything okay so that's a problem but uh, inside my code you're, you're gonna get a pretty stable reading I'll just love a got a tractorino nice tractorino was a project that I did for DJs okay guys so let's come here um, I'm going to turn me turn me off here so this is a breadboard and what is a breadboard is something that you use to create connections without so you can see here if it focus but if it doesn't focus whatever you can see it here that has lots of holes that you can plug jumpers so I can create a connection with a jumper like that without soldering and again uh, if you want a more in-depth uh, more in-depth video go for my DIY MIDI controller workshop imagine that every like this part here every column has a conductive material below it so if I connect let's say in 35 here this is uh, column 35 there's numbers there and I connect another wire in line 35 I am connecting these two wires here because both are touching the same conductive material so every column so this is divided so this is a division so it's not connected all the way through but it's connected in every column here and every column here in the vertical line and here it's in the horizontal so why we have this horizontal line sometimes we need to connect a lot of components to the same thing such as to the ground we need to connect every component to the ground so how can we connect all those components like tens tens of components into the same ground we use a common ground so my arduino is connected the ground of the arduino is connected to this blue rail here you can see here you can see that two there the ground is connected to the blue thing and buttons are connected to the blue thing and potentiometers too the five volts or the positive is connected in the red line so that's blue you usually connect your common ground and in the red you connect your common five volts so that's how you use a breadboard in a nutshell basically you can use to connect things without soldering so here what I have I have three buttons one leg of the button is connected to ground and the other one is connected to in pin 4 I have two potentiometers one is connected to the other one to 5 volts and the middle one is connected to an analog pin of the Arduino one this one is connected to a0 and this one is connected to a1 so that's all you need to do here in this breadboard of course you can add more components but for now we don't need that so guys that's it for the circuit for buttons and potentiometers is it's quite easy it's, it's pretty straightforward just having some water and um, now I want to show you how you can make it into MIDI so um, I want just want to show you a quick example using an Arduino which is probably the first thing everybody uh, do of like how you program your first Arduino um, okay so here is my screen and I want you to go to arduino.cc so arduino.cc is where you can download uh, your the Arduino IDE so what is an Arduino IDE an Arduino IDE is what I'm opening here the Arduino IDE is this integrated development environment and you program your Arduino one thing that's really cool about the Arduino and you can come here to software and you download the Arduino IDE I'm not going to do that okay you can download there when you want but what you get is the Arduino IDE um, I'm opening here because of the live stream the my computer is super slow but hopefully we can get that uh, going so guys please questions right now while the Arduino uh, while the ID opens Boa noite Eden Artman Boa noite Silveira how can I make oh Phonext Phonext CSE ask how can I make Arduino Nano a MIDI class component well you can you can go to the description of this video and there's the code and you can go to the github page and you can download the two you can download the two of them okay um, that is the code that we're going to use here in the Arduino 
And one thing, like, why it's going to be easy? Like, why programming can... How programming can possibly be easy? Well, programming is not. If you want to program your Arduino, like I did from scratch, all the code that I use, I made it. Of course, I use libraries. I adapted things from other people. But everything I made it, and I have been working on this code, and I only use for 90% of my projects. Uh, let me change to me, meanwhile. And I use for 90% of my projects the same, the same code, the same Arduino code. Well, guys, my ID is not opening. I'm starting to get a little bit worried. Okay, so getting back to the um, to why it's going to be easy for you, because oh, it's opening now. One thing that's really um, nice about the Arduino community is that many people share open source projects, like I do. Projects that you can just download and um, you just need to have a little bit of knowledge of how to use an Arduino IDE, uh, which I'm maybe going to show you here, the Arduino IDE, but I also show you in the DIY MIDI controller workshop. Actually, today I wanted to show you way more uh, how to use my extended code that I only share inside my course which is the full, the extended, I don't, I don't remember the name, but it's the Arduino uh, full something, whatever, uh, which I'm trying to open, but maybe, yeah, it's super, super slow. But what I do, or what, what I do, in, at least what I do inside my course, the Making Music with Arduino. Besides, by the way, there's, I have three courses. One is the Making Music with Arduino. The other one is the Making Music with Arduino, the Arduino programming. And the other one is the KiCad PCB design. So three courses. The Arduino, uh, the making music with Arduino, the making music with Arduino is a course where I teach you how to build MIDI controllers without having to learn how to code. You only need to adapt some things in my code and I go step by step. What do you need to adapt to use buttons? How many buttons? Where those buttons are? What do you need to adapt to use a potentiometer? What do you need to adapt to use multiplexers to increase the number of inputs? How to use LEDs? Like how to use normal LEDs or digital LEDs? so you can get LED feedback. How can you use motorized fader? How can you use rotary encoder? How can you use displays to actually see which channel you are actually in? Basically, uh, what I teach is how you can do it the, in the easiest way possible. And the Arduino programming, the course, is where I teach you how I did that, how I program those parts. I teach you how to code, if you want to learn how to code. So the first is, I want to be, build MIDI controllers without learning how to code. Fast. That's the making music with Arduino. I want to also learn how to code. That's the Arduino programming. And then, I want to learn how to build my own printed circuit boards, like that. Like, this is the Tractorino. This avoids wire. Like, with a PCB, you don't need wires for the rest of your life. And it's easy to assemble, way easier to assemble, way faster to assemble, way more reliable looks super professional and like the Tractorino got super popular just because the PCB is super cool and it's super powerful and super easy to build. Okay, so with that being said, um, let me say, let me see some questions here. How about sliders and they don't require, require a 10-bit ADC? A buddy of mine in Berlin has been working on a cool MIDI controller with faders and he also built his own stainless steel. Okay, so sliders are exactly the same thing as rotary potentiometers in a different layout. This is a, a, a potentiometer is a um, variable resistor. You just change the resistance, it's like a resistor, like you are decreasing the amount of current that flows through it. And depending on how much you turn, you, de you decrease or increase the amount of current that flows through it, and then you can read this in the Arduino. A slide potentiometer is exactly the same thing. Uh, the Arduino has a 10-bit ADC, so I didn't talk about resolution, about bits, maybe we should, but maybe it's too complicated for now, but uh, you need to convert analog to digital, because you have the world is, you have an infinite numbers between two numbers, that's reality, and until you can divide, until it's not divisible anymore, and it, it used to be the atom, now we have quarks and things like that, but let's say it's infinite. But the computer doesn't have infinite divisions between A and B. You have to quantize this A to B. 
So let's say you have zero to five volts, which is the voltage of the Arduino. So you're gonna change between zero and then you need to convert this to a set of numbers. You need to quantize this to a set of numbers. So you need an analog to digital converter. And the Arduino has the analog to digital converters in the analog pins. So that's what analog pins are. And the Arduino has a resolution. As resolution is how many numbers you can put between the minimum and the maximum. The Arduino has a 10-bit resolution in its analog pins, which 10 bits is like 10 ones and zeros. How many combinations of ones and zeros you can get with 10? You can get 1,000, and 24 numbers. So 10 bit resolution gets you 1024. Does it, even, does it mean that MIDI has 1024 numbers? Have you ever noticed that MIDI only goes from zero to one to, to 127? So 128 values? So instead of 1024, you only have 128 because the MIDI protocol resolution or what fits in a MIDI message is only seven bits, quite a few, it's not much. So, um, however, there are ways you can combine two bits of seven and get 14 bit resolution, which gets you, I guess, 16,384 numbers. And I teach you how to have, how to use high resolution faders inside my course too. Um, it's a way you have to combine two bits. Uh, I, I, know, I don't know if I'm answering your question or just talking more, but um, resolution is a thing. And MIDI only has 128 possible values unless you create, you do something in the code which it's super easy to do in my code. You, you, you just do like one line like ta, -ta and you can uh, high resolution faders and you can get uh, 16,000 blah, 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 okay? So, okay guys, I have the Arduino ID here and let me get to my board again. Okay, I'm not going to use the Arduino Uno because it's super slow just for opening an Arduino project, okay? So I'm going to just stay with the Arduino Pro Micro which is the one that we're going to use for our MIDI controller. And I'll do my best here so we can so we can see what's going on. But yeah, it's super slow. But here is the code that I want you to use, which is this, uh, there's the date which I last updated it and the DIY MIDI controller full. There's the DIY MIDI controller, which only supports buttons and potentiometers. But there's this one that supports, uh, well, this code supports buttons, potentiometers, rotary encoders, motorized faders, displays, LEDs, addressable LEDs, multiplexers, um, high resolution faders, and many things. So it, it's quite powerful. Okay guys, so I don't know if you'll be able to use this today, but at least I, I want to show you, okay? So you're going to open the first file and you can see that it has lots of tabs. Each tab is responsible for doing one thing in the code. So the whole code is all those tabs together. Um, but we only change things in the first, only change things in the first tab. This is where things happen in the background. And here is the first tab is where you configure things. So the first thing is choosing your board. You can choose, it implement, this code also implements different boards. The ATmega328 family, which is the microcontroller of the Arduino Uno, the Mega, the Nano, but this is not MIDI class compliant. You need an extra hack, you need hairless MIDI to convert serial to MIDI, and I'm not going to show you how you can do that, and it's increasingly less stable using hairless MIDI, so I try to avoid hairless MIDI, and I try to avoid Arduino Uno Omega um, for, for my final projects, okay? Only for prototyping. Then you can use ATmega32U4. If you're using ATmega32U4 family, which is the micro, Pro Micro and Leonardo, which are the ones we want for final projects, or the Tinsy. And there's this debug thing here, if you just want to debug the code in the serial monitor. So this will make you a MIDI controller, and this will make you, this is for you to see the messages that are happening. This is really important, really, really important. I always start with debug, because I will press the button, and I will see in the serial monitor, which we can open here, which type of message is arriving. So no message is arriving because our MIDI controller is not set to debug. So we are going to copy this and only paste here debug. So how we can 
use encoders, potentiometers, blah, 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 blah. This first section here is where you turn things on and off. And to turn something on or off is simply as typing two bars until it's grayed out. When it's gray, it's just a comment. It doesn't do anything. But if I delete, it gets color again, and now it's something. See the comments here after the double bar. Comment if not using buttons. So to comment is double bar. So I'm not using buttons now. So I want to use buttons. So I want to define this, not comments. So here I can turn on buttons, potentiometers, using a multiplexer. I can turn on encoders, now pixels, which are addressable LEDs, a display. I can use banks, uh, which is great to use with displays and encoders. I can have banks and I can change those banks using buttons. And for example, I can have banks for buttons, bank for potentiometers, a lot of things. And I explain each of those things in the course. Uh, here, I can also now uh, use, like this is a bit shifter. It's if I want to increase the number of outputs of, your, of my code. If I want to use many LEDs, how can I use that? You use a bit shifter, which is something like the multiplexer. It increases the number of outputs. So a multiplexer increases the inputs and the bit shifter in increases the outputs. Are you using a VU meter? You can use the LEDs as a VU meter. So I have here also coded uh, how can you use like a bunch of LEDs to behave as a VU meter, although a VU meter can only be used with tractor or Ableton Live using a max for live plugin I, I created. Uh, do you want the LEDs to be used as a view or LED feedback? Like you play a note and the LED turns on. Here, high resolution fader. So for example, if I do this, now I am using high resolution faders. Nothing else more. Motorized faders. And even if you want to use with the Mackie protocol to use with Pro Tools. Also, if you want to change octaves with buttons. So many things you can turn on and off. For now, we only want buttons and potentiometer. Before we go forward, let me see if there's any questions. What about MIDI 2.0? Uh, MIDI point two, MIDI 2 I didn't actually take took like a great look at it. I know that's going to improve a lot of things, but uh, I'm not using it yet here in the um, in the in the MIDI controllers. I'm really curious about like if you guys uh, know more, you can tell me. I know that MPE MIDI Polyphonic Expression. Uh, got a big improvement, things like that, uh, resolution, but I'm not uh, totally aware of how to use it in the Arduino yet, okay? Another cool thing are piezo surfaces. Yeah, piezo are um, little discs that you can tap and it tells you the intensity of your tap. It's good for you to do velocity sensitive things, but not great. Piezo, have, piezo has a lot of problems, which you should use another type of material, which is called um, Velo, v Velostat. Anyways, uh, I'm not going to explain how to use velocity sensitive sensors right now because it's a little bit more complex. But you can do something with um, piezo if you're not using like many piezos like close together because you can touch one and the surface can vibrate and vibrate the other piezo and you can get false readings. And um, <laughs> I don't think, like Tian said, I don't think anybody needs me 2.0. Well, with high resolution fader, I yet don't see a reason to where I need. And even with the XT synth, that instrument that looks, looks like a guitar, I did. It uses MIDI polyphonic expression, uh, just like the Rolly Seaboard. Exactly, the Rolly, exactly like the Rolly Seaboard, I use in the XT synth and with, with normal MIDI. So it's really because I, I don't see a reason why right now I need it, but if I need it, I'll start using. Okay, so after we chose what we are using, now we need to calibrate things or uh, we need to set things up. And when I say things, set things up, so here are the libraries that I am using. You don't need to change anything here. Don't need to change anything here in the libraries until you get to this thing here, button. So here is where we start to configure things. And it's pretty easy. Can be a little overwhelming because there's a lot of lines, but if you just find what you're looking for, you can press Ctrl F or Command F to find things. So if you type like buttons and read the comments, total number of buttons, number of buttons in the Arduino plus the number of buttons on multiplexer one plus buttons on multiplexer two. So all the buttons summed you put here. So I have how many? So just type three here. N then here, 
Number of buttons connected straight to the Arduino. Because you can have buttons connected to the Arduino, you can have buttons connected. Let me open, make it bigger here. You can have a multiplexer. So this is a multiplexer. No, this is a multiplexer. And this increases the number of inputs. So you can have buttons connected to the multiplexer, okay? And that's going to be separate. So the only thing we need to change right now is number of buttons in the Arduino or number of total number of buttons, which is three. Then total number of buttons in the Arduino, which is three because all of them are connected to the Arduino. And here, the pins of each button connected is straight to the Arduino. So pins of each button connected is straight to the Arduino, not the pins connected to the multiplexer. So I am connecting in pin two, three, and four. Here is if you're using a multiplexer, which we are not, but you can configure here your multiplexer. Pretty straightforward too. Now this is nice what type of message you want to send. Here you can configure if you want to send a note number, because like MIDI notes, C, C sharp, which are in numbers in MIDI. So like, I guess 32 is a C, C3. No, 36 is a, th is a C. And you can use control change and you can use, and um, toggle is like you press one time and then you press another, you press one time, you get a note on and you press another time and you get a note off. And guys, we are gonna do a 30 seconds break. I'll be right back. If you want to get a tea, go to the bathroom. That's what I'm going to do right now because things are getting crazy right here. So I'll be right back. And we are back. Oh my God, how can we possibly be do a live that long without going to the toilet? Good luck for us. Okay, let's see the, the, the questions. I'm halfway testing the MIDI drums. If you have time, we'd love to hear about your theremin. Yeah, we can talk about that later. If I ever, if I ever done, PCB printed FSR sensors. So um, just a second, I'm gonna grab something here. So about the FSR, so force sensitive resistor. Not exactly, but almost. So this is a PCB I've done, I made. And um, this is the PCB that I actually do in the KiCad course. I show you how I did this. I created this PCB while recording the course. So that's everything I did here. It's in the course, the uh, KiCad PCB design course. And this type of PCB is made for you to use with rubber pads. So how does this work? The material that is here is the same um, as the Velostat. It conducts energy, but depends on how pressed it is, it conducts more or less energy. So it changes its resistance depending on how much pressure you put on it. Okay, and here, I'm going to make our life easier. And here, each of those things here are basically just two connections, two terminals. It has a fancy, um, it has a fancy drawing here, but basically it's just two terminals. And when this thing here touches the terminal, we get a signal. And this type of thing can be used for, um, something like that can be used for uh, sensitivity, okay? So I'm not going to use this with velocity, it's just on and off. And this thing here, the Faduino, uh, will be a fader port uh, clone, let's say. You know the fader port with motorized fader? That's the idea. So I'm going to connect this motorized fader, it's going to be in the side, and all of these will be uh, functions that you can control the DAW. There will be a rotary encoder here and the motorized fader. And it will be so easy to assemble because there's no buttons you need to solder. You just drop this here and it has LEDs. So each button can have a different color. So yeah, it's a, it's a nice project. I can't wait to, to get this done, like a, the full controller. So let's come back. Where were, where were we? Uh, let's come back. Okay, so let's configure our buttons. So here, put here the type of message Oh, sorry, you're not seeing my, my screen, okay. So now we need to edit this. Here is, put here the type of message you want to send. In the same order you declared the button pins. NN for note number, CC for control change, T for note, T for note number, but in toggle mode. This is pin two, three, and four. So that's, that's the order I declared, first, second, and third. So now I need to tell, do I want a note number Control change or note number in toggle mode. So I have these three options. So let's say I want note number, note number, and let's let's keep like that. I'm just I'm going to change it here just for you to see. So first would be control change, second note number, and then note number. Then here we need to 
tell which number we want, which note or which control chain. So I want to send control change 11, let's say, and then note number 36 and note number 38. Now our buttons are configured. We need to configure our potentiometers, so go down a little bit until you find potentiometers, and it's pretty similar. Number, total number of potentiometers. We have number of pots connected straight to the Arduino. We have two. If we are and out oh, and the pins. Now for an analog pin, you need to declare with an A in the beginning. A0, A1. So first potentiometer is connected to A0 and second to A1. Same, if you're using a multiplexer, you're going to configure a multiplexer here. And here, potentiometers will send control change no matter what in this code, at least for now. You can send pitch band, but Mostly you just want to send control change. And here you can type the number of the control change you want to send. And that's all. All you need to do to build a MIDI controller, uh, to program MIDI controller. There are other things you, you can do like <laughs> put wires and solder, but make an enclosure. But we're gonna talk about, more about it. You know, things here, for example, if you want to use encoders, you're gonna, same thing. You're gonna tell the number of encoders. You just change this, oh, by the way, Things with the star are the things you can change. For example, this doesn't have a star, this doesn't have a star, doesn't have a star. Um, this should have a star. So you will change, if I remember, uh, you will change things that have a star here, okay? So number of encoders, then here uh, the pins of the encoders, but then it, it starts to get a little bit more complicated. You can actually store presets. Um, you can set up your basic MIDI channel for the button potentiometer encoder. Here, for example, you can change the colors of your... Um, if you're using LED feedback with like a like a MIDI fighter with a button that changes color, you know? You can change the color of your buttons. Here you configure the bit shifter, configure the view, the motorized fader, because then you need a motor too. The, it gets more complicated when you go down like to things like motorized fader, so... But even then you can... Just this you need to configure, you know, that's that's not much. You, you don't need to learn, you don't need like a college degree, you know. You don't need months, maybe a couple of days, you know. But that's all basically, uh, at least if it is working, <laughs> okay. A, a part, of the, part of the maker journey is learning how to troubleshoot, is finding where the problem is. And trust me, you're gonna get problems, you're gonna have problems, I have all the time, with time and with uh, techniques, like I have codes just for you to help you with debugging, uh, I have a class only about how to debug, how to find the, the problem, how to troubleshoot, you know, which is huge, I guess, learning how to troubleshoot. But anyways, we want to see now in the serial monitor, first we need to select the board, and if this doesn't get too slow, Okay, so I want to select the board, the SparkFun Pro Micro. Actually, you will have to install the SparkFun Pro Micro board. And well, I'm not going to show you how here, but uh, you need to install the SparkFun Pro Micro board. Actually, it comes in Arduino AVR boards, the Micro. It's useful, but probably it might, it might brick your Arduino. And if it gets bricked also, you need to unbrick it until it works flawlessly. But anyways, you need to change. You need to choose your board. Could be an Arduino Uno, for example, the Dewey. But I am going to select Spark from Pro Micro. Uh, and port here, you need to select the USB port where your Arduino is connected. Usually, it's this USB modem. It's MIDI now because it's working as a MIDI controller. But it's something USB or COM4, COM3 if it's Windows. And um, that's all you need to do. So then you have here verify and upload. Verify will tell you if you have any error in your code. So you're going to see here this bar, this bar that's verifying. Is it possible some more info about multiplexing, multiplex config? Uh, dude, multiplexing is a little bit more complex. I have all the info you need inside the, inside the course, the making music with Arduino. But right now there's no way like we can talk more because there's uh, information about how you connect the multiplexer and uh, why you connect that way, which pins are which, but yeah, know that this code here um, you can use with that. And, oh, and when you download the code and things like that, you can see the schematics. And I have the schematic for the multiplexer, so you can see at least how I am wiring the multiplexer. Okay, so you can see here that's done compiling. If I got an error, it would show the error, but I'm not going to try to get an error here. I'm, I'm trying to avoid wasting time. So then you click upload. So now the Arduino um, will receive the code, we, we will upload the code through the USB. 
and almost there. Okay, so we are done. Then, because we are in debug, we're gonna open serial monitor. It should be 11.52.00 baud, baud rate. If everything went right, we should see something when we press the button. Button 0, channel 0, CC11, value 127. Then value 0 when we release. So channel 0 actually means channel 1. Arduino language 0 is 1 when we convert to MIDI, in the channel at least. So remember I chose MIDI CC, 11. Then second button, note 36, velocity 0, then when we release velocity 0, so 127 and 0. Button 2, or the third button, note 38, exactly like we configured. So it means that when I change this to Arduino um, or to MIDI, I'm quite sure it's going to work. If it's not working here, it's because either you did something in the circuit or in the code. Okay, and then you need to troubleshoot. Now potentiometers, pot 0, channel 0, CC1, value, you can see uh, from 0 to 127, and you can see here that responsive value, that's the actual reading by, uh, that's the actual responsive reading, uh, or the, the reading with the filtering. Remember when we talked about unstable potentiometers and how this code supports, or how this code solves this, makes a responsive or a stable reading. So that's the stable reading. I could put here the not stable, but that's all, all I wanted to read here. So we should have value from 0 to 127, and here value from 0 to 127, and it only should move when you move the potentiometer. If your potentiometer is moving, like if you're seeing values coming here, changing, without you touching the potentiometer, this might be because the breadboard, uh, that's going to be more stable when you solder, but you can increase this value here. Go to potentiometers and there's this variable here, ver threshold. Threshold for the potentiometer signal variation. Because it's always unstable a little bit. It's always moving a little bit, even if you're filtering. So you need to tell the Arduino only send a MIDI message if the if the change is bigger than. So here I chose eight and eight is an arbitrary value that I found testing, okay? You can increase this if you are getting a jittery potentiometer, but don't do too much, do as little as you can. Okay guys, um, now I'm going to go to MIDI monitor, try to open MIDI monitor, which is going to be a software that I'm going to use to, to monitor, monitor the incoming MIDI message. So see here that I don't have any MIDI controller and if I press a button, nothing happens. Only happens in the serial monitor. But if I choose ATmega32U4, it press and press upload. Because everything was working now, we should have a MIDI controller. Um, yes, please explain, explain responsive reading. So uh, the reading, so there's something that's called um, floating, which is a noise because every power thing, every electronics have some noise from the from the power, from the like the the current of your home, from even from your finger, like from you. You have electricity and you interfere in the in the how do you say the magnetic field of the Arduino around the Arduino. So it's always uh, jittery. So. You never have like, a, if you read the potentiometer in one place, you never have only like 100, 100 and 100 and 100. It's going to be 100, 103, 98, 104, really fast, changing really fast. And there, there are algorithms that try to fix that. I don't remember the name of the algorithm used in the responsive, um, which is, what is the name of the library? I have the library here. Let me find the library. Responsive analog read. That's the library, which gets this reading, applies some sort of algorithm, some filtering algorithm, and then you get a responsive or a stable reading from the analog read of the Arduino. It does all the work for you. Okay, so this library is great. Um, so I think that now if we open MIDI monitor, you can see here, that I have Spark Fun Pro Micro in my MIDI controllers. So what the hell is that? MIDI monitor is just a software for you to monitor incoming MIDI message, just to see what's, what you're getting from your MIDI controllers. It can be from any MIDI controller, okay? Um, so let me just 
fix something here. So, okay, come back to MIDI monitor. So if I press here, now you can see that I am sending control 11, you can see here 11 in channel one. And if I press the second button, I am sending note C1, 127 velocity, which is maximum, and zero. And then here I am sending D1, 127 and zero. Here I'm, I'm sending also my MIDI control change, which we can use to map things. And everything is working. Guys, if it's working here, it's going to work in your jaw. I'm just going to change something because I'm really low and I want um, higher notes because the pitch will be too low for you. So where are we in our buttons? Okay, so notes 36 and 38, let's 60 and 64. Okay, so let's upload again. And hopefully, guys, we're we are getting to the end. We are, our MIDI controller is ready. I'm just going to talk, uh, answer more questions, get to a little bit of a, uh, some, anything that comes to my mind about enclosures. But I just want to show you that we went from scratch until we made some noise and I, we want to do something in Ableton Live right after. And if you have any other sort of questions, please put in the comments. It's uploading the code, almost there. You can see when it's, when, that it blinks when it uh, uploads the code. Okay, so let's make sure we get other notes, yeah. So Ableton, so let's get some instrument. Let's get a piano, no, not this one. Okay, electric piano, basic. And first you also need to um, configure the MIDI controller in Ableton. If it's not too slow, I can open the settings, but it's going to show as Arduino Pro Micro. Okay, let's open the settings. Everything takes ages. Here in MIDI, you can see that now we have Spark Fun Pro Micro in in and out. We only need to use as in because we're not using LEDs, for example. If we were using LEDs, you could use out. And select track and remote. Track is to actually play notes and remote is actually to map parameters. So now, that was my mystery sound. If I press here, I, we should listen to a note. So we have our amazing two note MIDI controller. And this, I was like, oh my God, it's not working. But because this one, the first button is only for mapping. So I can, for example, um, let's map the play button. And you can see here that is CC11. So now if I press here, we don't have it. Stop bar should be in on my keyboard, so. Okay, so now we can uh, hear notes, but what, uh, what about mapping things? So I'm going to click here on pan and move this knob. You can see that mapped. And I'm going to uh, map to this send here, this other potentiometer. So now, you can see that it's changing the pan. And we can add some delay, the play button and note, and we mapped the pan knob and also the send. Okay, just waiting a little bit to know if you are there. Guys, okay, so I want to talk now. Okay, guys, so that was successful. So how can you go from this to a bigger MIDI controller, you know, from a, something like this? The process is pretty much the same, but instead of using breadboard as connections, you're going to use wires. So here I have an Arduino, an Arduino Pro Micro, and I connected all my buttons and potentiometers in the same style as I showed you here. I'm not using even a multiplexer, it's just the same. There's no mystery. There, just in the code, I would say which button went where and which potentiometer went where. You know, how many and the type of message I want to send. You know, uh, something that might then, it's complicated. It's the, inco the, the enclosure. Um, the enclosure, is the, I think the enclosure is the thing that I took more time to figure it out, to, how to make like a professional enclosure. Let me get another MIDI controller here, like this one. This is the MIDI Mood, and it was inspired by the Mini Moog app. So you can see that's uh, pretty similar to, to the Mini Moog plugin. You know, you have, you can select waveforms, uh, you have the, the parameters for filters, 
But that's just a MIDI controller. You, it's just lots of knobs. Uh, this has a multiplexer with an Arduino Pro Micro. That's how I have that many uh, knobs. But that's just a MIDI controller in the same layout of the Mini Moog plugin, which is a plugin that I really like. And um, you can see that the enclosure of this one is pretty similar to the enclosure of this one. But this is wood with varnish, uh, but the design, the way they mount, is pretty similar. I design all my enclosures inside Fusion 360, which is a CAD 3D software, and then I export the files to LaserCut. And uh, I have some Fusion 360 videos here in, the, in my YouTube, and I also start from the same template. Uh, I, I only choose like what's the length, blah, 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 height, the width of the material and the whole design adapts itself. It's called a parametric design, where you just change some numbers and the whole design changes itself. The only thing I need to do at every project is designing where the holes will be, which is kind of easier. And uh, and then send to a place to cut the, 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 the enclosure. This is wood, I cut with a CNC, but the other one is acrylic, I cut with uh, laser cut. There's two companies in my town, so I advise you to look in your town to see if there's any people uh, using uh, laser cutters or CNC's or look for fab labs or maker spaces, hacker spaces, usually, usually they have, or um, on the internet you can find at uh, ponoco.com or Scoopteo. Put laser cutting online and you'll find it. There's many services, but it's more expensive. If you can find it locally, it's going to be uh, great, okay? What else? Um, let me come back to myself. Okay, guys, tell me, did you like it? Give me, give me your, your heart there in the comments. Of course, likes and subscribes are, are also welcome. So yeah, I know there was a lot of content, but there's even more to learn about how to make MIDI controllers. And if you want a step-by-step -step in an organized course, you can check my Making Music with Arduino course below for building MIDI controllers and its brother courses, which is the Arduino programming and KiCad PCB design, where in one I'm going to teach you how to program and in the other one how to design your own printed circuit boards. This way you can become a really pro maker where you'll be able to build your MIDI controllers the way you want, super professional and even sell it and make some money with it. And please put your doubts here in the comments that I'll do my best to answer. And of course, if you didn't do yet, please subscribe and ring the bell so you help me too. So that's it for now. Ciao.